Welcome to the media ministry of Lake Highlands Church. Please enjoy today's speaker. Hi, y'all. I'm so glad to be back with y'all. Y'all are a blessing in my life right now. I am using my phone up here, not because I'm going to get distracted by it, but because I can't see that far anymore, okay, back there. So I'm going to make sure that we finish on time to honor your time. Thank you, worship team. I just, oh, I love to worship. It's such a blessing. So good to be in the presence of God as y'all lead us in that way. How was your week, church? Learning the kingdom, right? So good to be in the kingdom of God. I want to remind you this morning, you are citizens of the kingdom of God. It's who you are. We have been rescued out of the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of light, and we are sealed there. It's where we belong. It's how we're going to live, right? We're not partnering this other kingdom anymore. So we're going to start this morning by making the kingdom declaration again, this kingdom decree. I want you to stand up. Come on. And we're going to decree it again, and then we're going to, I'm going to give a brief overview for those of you who weren't here last week. So let's declare it together. I declare that the kingdom of God is an eternal kingdom, and his kingdom is near me right now. In my Father's desire to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth, I shall seek first the kingdom of God and all things shall be added to me as I seek to do my Father's will here on earth. I have become a citizen of the kingdom of God. In God's kingdom, there is a new order of living. I will seek to live from my identity as a citizen of the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is in me. I live in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. I declare that I have eyes to see God's kingdom, ears to hear the language of this kingdom, and understanding and wisdom that comes from the king of the kingdom. This is good news. Okay, y'all can, oh, oh, we're not done. Oh, yes, here we go. By the grace and power of God, I shall call forth the kingdom of God to manifest itself in my current situations and understanding. I declare today the kingdom of God come. God's will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. How in the world can we forget that last part? Woo! Amen. Okay, you can sit down. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Y'all, I've done a freedom weekend this last weekend, so my voice, y'all can just pray right now. Yes, bless it, it's coming. I wanna say something really fast. Um, I brought one of my dear friends and intercessors with me, Kimmy McNeese, her name, she's right here. And I wanna thank her for coming, but I also wanna say to this church, I told her on the way here, I've never felt so prayed over um, in anywhere I've ever gone uh, like this church. and. I just want to thank you, uh, and I want to remind us the power in prayer, because there are many things that I can just feel it trying to come against, and I just say, nope, (sighs) push you back, because those prayers are in the bowl, and I just call on them. So every intercessor, I want to say thank you. Uh, Okay, so this morning, um, yeah. Could I pray one thing? Could I pray one thing? Uh, Okay, sure. I just want to pray one thing over us, so would you close your eyes, please? Heavenly Father, as we draw near to you, would you draw near to us? Thank you, Lord. I agree. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would take what is the Father's and Jesus's and make it known to us. We agree, Lord. You are a good, good Father. Mm Holy Spirit, we open our hearts and minds to you. Would you make this known to us? This is what you do. This is who you are. Mm -hmm. We open ourselves to you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for that. Amen. I agree. Okay, so we're going to start. I'm going to do a quick overview for those of you who are not here. So last week we learned, and you can go ahead and put the kingdom chart up there if you will, thank you. There are two kingdoms 
in operation. And I want to say up front and remind us again, these two kingdoms are not equal. Even though they look like they're side by side, they are not equal, not even close, okay? And there is a good king, and there is a, there is a bad Satan who opposes this king, and he has been hurled, and he has been defeated, right? right? And so we operate as citizens of the kingdom of light, who, is, who, who has its king as the reigning, ruling, forever king for all times, right? So in this, these two kingdoms directly oppose each other, and you are the aim, you are the target, because Satan hates God, and God's affection is you. Everybody say, I am God's affection. I'm sorry if you're uncomfortable with that. It is still true. You are the aim, the entirety of God's affection. And Satan hates God, so who's he going to come after? His kids. You can come after me all day long. I don't care, but you try to touch one of those babies. Get off. Get back. It's not going to be pretty. And this is how God feels. We're going to see it. We're going to see it all. We can see it all through Scripture. But I want you to know that these two kingdoms war over you. We were singing today and um, we were talking about and praying, may your kingdom come, may your will be done. And as soon as we got there, I just, the, the spirit just halted me. He's like, you know what my will is? My will is every single one of them. Just let it be known. In all the earth, the desire and the will of God is for every one of his children to be right here, right back with him, never separated, always together, always one, always enjoying the fullness of all that is the kingdom of God. He has no greater desire and no greater need than that one thing. And everything he's designed and put forth in the kingdom of God is for that to happen, for that restoration to come back, for us to come into full revelatory knowledge of the goodness of his love for and affection for you, and for that to just spread to every single one of us on the planet. And it just gets real simple. That's the gospel. It's not get all complicated. Restoration of every human heart, every single child that belongs to their daddy, back with him, and fully and completely receiving this unfathomable love that he can't control or help himself over, right? Okay, so what we talked about last week is these two kingdoms operate in certain ways, and we want to know how they operate, because many of us have been delivered from the kingdom of light and brought I mean, from the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of light, but sometimes we're still operating in the wrong kingdom. And the blood has made the bridge, made the way, and we want to throw off that kingdom and operate in agreement and alignment with the kingdom of God. Correct? Amen. Come on, church. That's what we want. It's our blood bought rightful citizenship why in the world would we uh, would we move back we're not going to we're not going back we don't have to we don't want to and we're not going to okay so this is what i want us to remember we have the victory everybody say i have the victory i, have the victory. <clears throat> I know some of you don't feel like that it doesn't change the reality that you have it okay so we're going to start today, this moving into our freedom series, talking about this good king that rules and reigns over the kingdom of heaven. And I want you to know that he rules and reigns over the king of the kingdom of darkness. I just need to remind you of that. They are not equal. Okay. The power that is given to Satan by the believer is exactly that. It's what we give over. So if you see yourself, we go back to this list over and over, and you're struggling, I'm telling you, 
You resist him long enough. You decree the truth long enough. You walk in the opposition of the, in, in agreement with the kingdom of light long enough. Darkness has to go. If you turn the light off in a room and you turn the light on, is there any discussion as to what happens to the darkness? No, there is no discussion. There is no discussion here. And once we get that in our heart and in our mind and in our spirit, the darkness is going to go. It has to. Yes. It has to. By the authority of the blood of Jesus and by the fact that Jesus lives in you. And he has given you authority. Do you remember he said that? All authority in heaven and earth belongs to me. These next few words, I give it to you. What? I give it to you. Now go. Okay. Anybody uncomfortable with me yet that we have that kind of power? But we do. Okay. So here's what I want us to know. We're going to discover this good king. And I asked the Lord this morning. It's going to make me cry. So y'all just hang on. I asked the Lord, is there anything I need to start with, Lord? Because I always submit my outline to him because he often changes it much to my annoyance. I like a plan. He changes his plan. So sometimes I just like to ask him up front because it's more comfortable for me. And this morning undid me. It just undid me that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is right here, right now, aware of what this message is going forth. And every single heart that sits in this room, he's here. And I said, I could feel the rumble. I call it the rumble inside me sometimes when I ask the Lord things. And he said, yes, there is something. This message is going to be really hard for some people. Because they had really, really bad daddies. And they did not manifest a single aspect of my character or my heart or my desire for them. They didn't get to see it. They didn't get to feel it. It isn't tangible to them. And actually, out of the brokenness of their dads, they got to, Satan used that to absolutely try to obliterate their heart. And he said, I have a message to them, so I'm going to give it because I don't know who all you are. But you know who you are. And he says, I understand and I'm not mad that your spirit is going to resist this message. I'm not mad at all. Not even a little bit. I get it. And I'm with you and I've been with you. And as long as it takes for you to hear this message, I'll keep saying it. Because one thing is certain to those of you who need to hear that message, that attack, that obliteration that came from the devil to try to resist this message is not stronger than the love of your father. It holds it holds no power to resist the Father heart's love. It cannot do it. So for those of you who are struggling, for those of you who resist this, just rest, be at peace. The battle's gonna rage inside you. You're like, what in the world? This is not even real. And he is gonna prove to you that he is real. And he is tender and gentle and patient and kind for as long as it takes. And he's never going to stop saying it to you till you feel it, till you get it, till you know it. Till you know it. Okay. Take care of those hearts because they matter to God. Okay. So there is a descriptive word in scripture where God begins to describe himself to us. And I believe it's a foundational, fundamental truth. I don't care how mature we think we are in God, we're never going to get away from this. He says that you're going to enter the kingdom by becoming like what? A little child. I love children. I have five of them, bless me. I love children. Bless me, yes. Thinking of them right now. Um, Okay, and God intentionally calls himself father for a reason. 
And he calls us children for a reason. Are you ever not a child? Nope. If you're born, you're a child for the duration. But I want you to listen to that because the kingdom works in a certain way. And he said, I'm your father. And he made you a child. That means you're never going to outgrow being a child. And the more, the more and more and more that we humble ourselves and become like a child, the more we enter the kingdom, the more we can experientially know the kingdom of God. Now, that's going to bother some of us adults who like to be in control, like to be in charge, like to think that we know what to do, how to do it, think we don't, we're good, we don't need a hug, we don't need nurture, we don't need affirmation, we don't need encouragement. Croc, you do. We all do, and we're never going to outgrow it. And he knew it. And that's why he calls us his child, and that's why he calls us his father. So, in 1 John 4, verse 8, He says this, God is love. I want you to say God is is. love. Love. Now something either is or it isn't. I just want you to sit in that. It either is or it isn't. See, God didn't just say I act loving, though he does. God didn't just say I... You know, I'm, I, I decide when, I'm, when I want to act in kindness or gentleness or compassion. No, he makes a descriptive here that is, un, it's just unearthing. God is love. He's never going to not be loving. He can't not be loving because he is love. Now, if you sit in that very long, it'll undo you. And I'm telling you, it will wreck, absolutely wreck the religious spirit. And I want it wrecked. I've been binding it all week. Spirit of religion has to go in Jesus' name. Spirit of religion causes us to focus completely and totally on us compared to our eyes on him. Our faithfulness, our abilities versus his faithfulness and his abilities. Our character, our behaviors versus his character and his declaration over who we are. It's very strategic. He loves to keep us bound in it, discouraged by it, or even taken out by it. It binds, it yokes, and it brings death. He is a loving God that's all about relationship and is breathing life and encouraging us and wanting to live in intimacy with us. His desire is relationship with you. His desire is not for you to serve him. Did, oh, did I just say that in church? I did. He is perfectly capable. Sorry for those of you who sit on the front row. I spit. I forgot to tell you that. I'm just telling you right now, his, he doesn't need you to do anything for him. It's astounding to me that he chose to manifest the kingdom of God through us, but that's how he chose to do it. The religious spirit wants to tell you, she just said he doesn't need me. Nope. I said he did not need you to do anything for him. He has made himself to need you jealously. His heart is not complete without you. Oh, he needs you. But he needs you because of love and relationship, not because of behavior and service. When he has laid down lovers... When he has intimate worshipers, when he has followers who hear his voice, trust him, and will do anything he says, oh, hide and watch what he can do with you. It will blow your mind. But what he needs from you, what he has yielded himself over in vulnerability and authenticity to you is all about relationship. It's all about love. See, love does crazy things. And I just want to submit, love does crazy things like creating humans. I love to think about heaven before creation. I want you to just picture this, okay? Somehow, some reason, Genesis tells us, God says, hey, let's create man in our own image. This is a great idea. Do you know you're a great idea to God? You're just a phenomenal 
Beautiful expression of a creator full of love. Manifest you. And this is his desire to do this. I'll ask him one day why. But what he says about you is that you are very good. He says creation was good till he got to you and then he says, oh, it's a very good. Now I'm gonna make you do something that's gonna bother you. But I don't care, we're gonna do it anyway because we're gonna align with the kingdom of heaven. I am very good. Come on. I am very good. That's how he sees you. He's not really, I'm gonna say that different. You're very good. That's just the bottom line to him. He adores you. He's proud of his work, sure of his work, confident. We see in scripture where he says, you know what? Um, remember last week he says, go, I mean, you, you got this. I'm gonna multiply you and you're gonna roll and reign. Not you're gonna just follow, you're gonna rule and reign. This, okay, y'all, love does crazy things. I want you to remember when you first fell in love, if you ever did. You kind of act like a fool. I'm just saying, a little bit. I watched these two. It was bad. <laughs> David, it's a good one. <clears throat> I listened to the stories all night. Bed with Donjali, telling me every little thing about David. It was awesome. And I'm just telling you, love does crazy things. And love decided on you. Now, I want you to stop with the discussion in heaven because it kind of blows my mind. I'm going to fly through it. There's a whole teaching on this, but I'm not going to go into it. So here's Father. Somehow they decide, because Father's heart wants it, that he's going to create human to manifest this love upon, to share relationship with. And Jesus says, fully knowing before the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. That's what the word of God says. So they've, they've counted the cost of this deal. It's not going to go so well. Do you understand that? He knows you. It's not always going to go so well. Whether that's because the kingdom of darkness is absolutely terrified because of you, or whether that's because of your own sin and rebellion and brokenness, it's not always going to go so well. And Jesus says, I'm in. God, I'll go. I will go. I will redeem them back to you. I'm in. Then the discussion comes. Jesus is coming back to the Father. After he destroys the devil and his works. Remember that. And I could just see it in heaven, in the, in, the, in the grand strategy of the scheme of things. Holy Spirit, tag, I'm it. I'll go. I'll go, Father. I'll stay in them. How about if I just get as close as we can possibly get to them? I'll come live inside of them. You can't get closer than that, y'all. Can't get more intimate than that. Right here, I'm going to go live inside of them, and I'm going to seal them, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to protect them. I'm going to encourage them. I'm going to seal them from the enemy. I'm going to walk with them. I'm going to reveal heaven to them. I'm going to reveal you to them. I'm going to reveal your ways. I'm going to teach them. I'm going to counsel them. I'm going to guide them. I'm going to comfort them. I'm going to strengthen them. I'm going to empower them, and I'm going to bring them back to you. That is what's going to happen before one of us took a breath. You think he has your stuff handled, y'all? Come on. Before we ever took a breath, it was taken care of. And it was decided that they're all in over you. Who would not want to give their life to this good king? I'm telling you, we will throw off sin when we get Father's love. And we'll just be like, ah, no more of that. It will not be hard to get rid of sin. The problem is we need an increased measure of receiving the Father's love. Remember that, that darkness goes when light comes. Well, sin goes when love comes. Sin goes when love comes. The enemy 
I just don't like him, y'all. You're gonna learn that about me. I have to be really careful when I start talking about the enemy to watch my mouth. So I want us to go to Genesis 3. <clears throat> if my boys were here, they'd laugh about that. I tell them to be very careful about their language, but sometimes the enemy, I just not, I'm not for him at all. So the enemy's tactics don't change. They stay the same. And the enemy's complete tactic is to come against this relationship of love, to block it, to sever it. Why? Because love destroyed hell. One thing, one thing, one thing destroyed hell, and it was love. And as you receive this love, and as you are consumed by this love, you will go destroy hell too, in his power and authority. And the enemy knows this, so he is trying everything he can to block us. He also knows that it's this love, this relational love between us and Father and Son and Holy Spirit that propels the kingdom of God and causes it to mightily advance on the earth. Everybody say amen, because that is true. It's the love of Christ inside of us, us taking hold of it, that takes it and does it. So the enemy, we're going to fly through Genesis 3. So I want you to turn there if you have your Bible. We're going to fly through it, and I'm going to read 1 through 6 first. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals God had made. I want you to know Satan was created. Have you got it yet that he's not equal to God? One day he asked the woman, did God really say to you that you must not eat from the fruit of any of the trees of the garden? Satan is a liar. He lies from the beginning. He can't speak anything but lies. And here we see him enter in the word of God. He's lying. He's lying about what God said. Of course we may eat of the fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat of it or even touch it or you will die. Look at verse four. You won't die, hissed the serpent. Oh, now we're calling God a liar. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. 6a, the woman was convinced. And here we watch, because of the convincing, the beginning of the fall. Because she believed the lie. Now we're gonna look really fast as we go on. What happens? He comes and he lies. In this, in all of chapter three, he begins to attack God's character. Oh, oh see, he knows. He knows how good it's gonna be for you and he doesn't want that. So he's after his character after his heart for you from the very beginning. He is striving to tear apart that trust relationship. He wants it. He's gonna distort through circumstance, through situations, all throughout our life to say, he isn't for you. He's withholding from you. He doesn't really want all the good things he has for you, though he's already given it in the kingdom of heaven. Why, why is he doing that? It's not just to torture you, although he's happy with that. It's to erode and rip you from that intimacy with Father God because he's terrified of it. So here we go. Enter our good Father. Verse eight. Well, first I wanna go up to verse seven. At the moment that they took of the fruit, at the moment they rebelled, at the moment they decided they wanted to be like God, because that's what the enemy convinced them they wanted. That's called rebellion. At that moment, suddenly their eyes were opened and they felt shame and nakedness. So what they do? They sew their fig leaves together to cover themselves. Enter the first thing we see of shame and hiddenness as we sin. Verse eight, when the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord among the trees which is what we do in our sin. Then the Lord God called to the man, where are you? This isn't a little measly, where are you? Come on guys, stop hard and seek. Nope. This is a desperate lover's cry. I have to be with you. Come back. I feel it. What happened? He starts to question. 
I heard you walking in the garden, so I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you you were naked? Who told you you were naked? The Lord asked, have you eaten from the trees, fruit I commanded you not to eat? Guys, this is not a, who told you? I told you not. No, this is a heartbroken. We need to hear that. This is a heartbroken father who says, no, this was protected. And now, and he's not happy because we see what he does next. Well, they start blaming. Do you see that they don't repent? He starts saying, she made me eat it. She says, well, he, you know, he convinced me, Satan's fault. What, Jim and I talked about this week, what would have happened if they would have just said, daddy, we did it, we're sorry. But that's not what they did. They sat in their blame, they sat in their hiding. I don't know what would have happened. Might have been awesome. So here we are. <laughs> and here's what this good daddy does. First of all, he tells them there are consequences to this behavior and he tells them what they are. They're not good. Everybody know that? Sin in your own life, not good. Brings death, brings a lot of pain, a lot of striving, a lot of suffering, a lot of work. And then he says this, then sweet daddy God of ours comes to the enemy and he says, because you have done this, then the Lord said to the serpent, because you've done this, you are cursed more than all the other wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. He is not a happy daddy. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. That's you. I'm going to cause hostility between these two kingdoms. You are. Do you see that you are the target? There's hostility now between them and Satan. And then he declares this, prefacing Jesus in you. You're going to strike his, her heel and he's going to crush your head. Oh, what? There it is. He's already in the beginning declaring our victory. Oh, there's gonna be some strikes, but make no mistake about it, they will crush you in the end. That's good news. So here we are. He sends them out and stations angels to guard them. I want you to know this was the protective heart of God because if they go eat of the tree of the life now, that's their state. And he says, oh, no, no, no. We see the, garden, oh, we see the, um, we see the tree again in, Gen um, um, in Revelations 21 or 22. I can't remember which one. When Jesus comes back. But his guarding of that tree was so our eternal state could be back in oneness and union through Christ forever. Your, your consequences sometimes are just that. They're the journey back. They're not because he's mad at you. They're because he's confident of who you are. And he wants to remind you that his way is better. So here we go. This good king, I want you to go to Psalm 103 with me. We're going to read 1 through 18. Stay with me because we're going to have to go quick here. All right, here we go. 103. I want you to listen, just take it in. This is your good daddy, your good king. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. I want you to know this is not somebody that's having to try to live apart from the kingdom of darkness. No. This is someone who's loving this God, this good king. He's having fun. He's celebrating that he gets to be part of the Lord's heart and life. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he's done for me. He forgives all my sins and he heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteous and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. I want you to know that somebody needs to hear that. He's gonna reveal his character to you because you need to know it again. The Lord is compassionate and merciful. 
slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse you nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height is above the heavens. He has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows we are weak like dust. He remembers we are only dust. Our days on earth are like grass, like wildflowers. The wind blows and we are gone. And though we have been here, even though we had never, as though we had never been here, but the love of the Lord remains forever. His salvation extends to the children's children of those who are faithful to his covenant, to those who obey his commands. This good God, oh, I just want you to know if I have to choose between the kings, I want this one. I want this one because one wants destruction, obliteration, exhaustion, pain, and one wants every bit of life he can give. So how do you know love is real? I mean, do you just believe anybody that walks up and says, I love you? You don't even know me. How in the world are you going to love the stuff that's in here? Right? How do you know that love is real? It happens when it starts being demonstrated. When you start seeing the evidential fruit. And even, you know how love's really pure and really true and really real is when it starts to be given and you give a bunch of crud back. Right? And then it just stays steadfast and steady. Still good. I get real uncomfortable when I start being really not nice and my husband's just like, come here. What's going on? I can't quit. I'm mad. It's hard. But that is what pure love without a hook, not Eros love, not the love that's going to love to get something back from you, but I'm talking agape love, purity of love that goes in after your junk, not only just isn't scared of it, goes in after it so that it can lavish itself upon you so that you're transformed by it. This is pure love. And I want you to know that the cross is the ultimate expression of the Father's heart of love towards you. It's the ultimate declaration that God is for you, not against you. While you were still directly in opposition to this love, to him, to relationship with him, he gave it all so you could see it, feel it, experience it, and know it based on nothing you did except hate him and oppose him. This is true love. And the blood speaks ongoingly to say I've made the way. The blood speaks ongoingly to say every day, all day, forever and ever. I want intimacy. I want you right back here. And he never ever gets tired of revealing how much he loves you. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Mm. It will make you uncomfortable how happy he is making sure you know how much you love him. He's never going to cross says, I'm never going to change my mind. I decided that this is the way that the kingdom of God is going to manifest. I'm in it. I'm happy with it. It's good. And I'm never going back. And that's what the cross says. That's what the life of Jesus given for you declares you are worth it. This is the level of your value. No matter what you do or do not do. And the religious spirit hates what I just said and I love it. Because it does not change the reality of the gospel of Jesus Christ. No greater love. No greater love. Has any man, has anyone than he who lays his life down? And that is what God did for you in Jesus. That is what Jesus decided that you were worth it to do for him. Yeah. The cross says it is finished. The cross says this is sealed. 
I sealed the complete destruction of your enemy and I sealed your complete victory over him. I seal that you will walk this battle and this journey until you're back with me, covered in the blood, absolutely no division between us, sure and confident and able to hear the Father's voice with an increasing, ever increasing capacity to receive his love. And I am telling you that to the capacity you train yourself, you discipline yourself, you allow yourself, you encourage yourself to receive the love of your Father God is the capacity you will have to experience the kingdom and to give it away. I'm telling you, sin, okay. To the level that you train yourself, discipline yourself, equip yourself, allow yourself, encourage yourself to receive the Father's love. It's the level that you will walk in the kingdom of God and give that love away. The church does not have a sin problem. I know the religious spirit's freaking out right now. I don't care. The sin problem was taken care of by Jesus Christ. The second, the second, the second you repent, the second you say, I sinned, God, I'm coming back. It's done it's appropriated the blood is there and the second we do that we're ushered in again into this river of love i'm telling you we have a receiving problem that's what we have we have a receiving problem because there is no equal to the love of god for you the passion for you and sin they're not equal Choose to be loved on like a little child. The Lord told me to share this story and then we're done. I get back from Thailand. We're back from Thailand. We're in a little bitty apartment. I did not want to come back from Thailand. Seven dreams. I've learned a hard language. Anyone know how hard the Thai language is? I won't bore you. It's hard. It's hard. Okay. Ma, ma, ma. That's five words. It's three different words. Stop. I can't. Okay. Anyway, we fall in love with this nation. We give our life for this nation. The Lord's called us to do that. We're there two years. I'm just where I can talk. Do you know I love to talk? I love to talk. I'm just where I can communicate besides like a babbling toddler. And he starts pouring out seven dreams. What? Seven dreams saying you're coming back. I'm like, la, 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 la. You were Lord up until... I had to go to Thailand, learn the Thai language, do some freedom ministry, and you call me back home. Not in. I'm not in, Lord. I come back. That's a long story. I submit. He's Lord. I'm not. Come back, and I am a mess, y'all. Anybody here a mess? I'm just asking. I got seasons in your life when you're just a mess. My faith is swirling. I'm like, who are you? What in the world is happening? Help me, Jesus. What, and who are these people around me? And I was bad. It was bad, it was in a bad way. And my sweet husband, he's like, hey, uh, have you asked Jesus what you need right now? I'm like, shut up. I don't care what I need. I don't wanna talk to him right now. I am mad at his ways. I know I need him. I'm not going anywhere, but it's not now. And he's like, no, I think you need to ask him what you need because I'm going to make that happen. He's desperate. Trust me, he was desperate. So I was like, okay, Jesus, what do I need? He said, I just want you to come be with me. Just get some music and just don't have to do anything. Just come be with me. I'm like, I don't want to. I'm mad. He's like, well, that's what you need. You ask, what do I need? What you needed. So I'm telling you, you need to be with me. So I would go and drive 20 minutes to this church and I would lay down in the floor with a bunch of these beautiful godly women that liked to pray. I used to like to pray. This time I didn't love to pray. And I was like, okay, so I would just go and we would worship and pray. And I would mostly just lay there, y'all, seriously, honestly, okay? And they would get visions and encounters with God. It was awesome to hear it. I needed to hear it, but you know, that wasn't what was happening with me. And um, so I would keep going though. I just kept going to get in his presence. And he just kept telling me, you need to be loved on, Shelly. That's what you need. You need to be reminded of how much I love you. And I'm like, "Mm, this is uncomfortable. But I would go. So this one day, I'm there and I fall asleep, y'all. All of heaven's coming down, vision's opening, and I'm asleep. 
I'm not kidding. And I, I, you know, when I wake up is when they're all sitting in their circle sharing. And I'm like, oh yeah, oh, yeah. I'm gonna think, I'm gonna make up a story. No, I'm not, I'm just gonna be real. I'm like, sorry, ladies, I slept. And they're like, it's okay. You probably needed that. You're a mom of three boys. Time I only had three. And literally, I'm like, okay. And so I get in the car and here it goes. I'm so sorry, Jesus. I love you more than that, God. I mean, really, an hour a week. That's all, that's all you're just saying. And actually, you just wanted to love on me. So I'm just, and the whole time, I'm blah, 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 blah. The Lord's like, shh, shh. I can tell you the road I was driving on. I'm like, no, I mean, really, I'm going to be back in. I'm going to stop being mad. I'm going to stop being hurt. I love you. Shh. I really love you more than snoozing. I remember saying that. And he was like, shh, Shelly. And then he asked me this question. I had a newborn at the time. Isaac was about three uh, months old. And he said, when is your favorite time with Isaac? I'm like, Lord, that's easy. Because I'm a mama. I'm a mama to my core. So I'm like, of course, it's when, I'm, it's when he's dead asleep in my arms. And this is what I'm doing. Look at his nose. Look at his eyes. Look how fat his fingers are. His fingers were this fat. He couldn't find my shoes because his feet were this big. And I was just like, oh, every wrinkle, every little freckle. He was my one with freckles. And I would just look at him and just say, God, what a gift. Thank you. He's so precious and beautiful and perfect. And he goes, that is how I feel about you right now. In the middle of your fits, in the middle of your stuff, in the middle of your not understanding, in the middle of your anger, in the middle of it all, I adore you. And I'm going, look how cute she is. She throws really cute fits. It's going to be okay. We're going to get through this. And he's just sitting there. He's like, do you know how long it's been since you just came and slept in my arms? You're so busy doing. And today I just got to be with you while I am now pulling over because I am snot sobbing. I'm not going to drive that way. And he goes, yeah, honey, just sit in it. And you would do well to spend your life there often. Because as I love on you, as I delight in you, as I encourage you, as I speak my affection, I'm telling you, we'll fall in love again. And you'll lay your whole life down for me. And you'll do whatever I say, like move to Thailand, learn a language, and come back to America. Bless my soul. I love America. I'm right here, y'all. Because he saw this day. He adores you. He sees your stuff a long time ago and he decided you were worth it. And then he decided that you're, you're just valuable enough that he's just going to come stick with you through it all and keep revealing this good, passionate, loving daddy. I pray this week you drink deeply. That's what I pray. An increased capacity, I speak it right now for every one of us, myself included, an increased capacity to receive the truth of this gospel love, this daddy, father heart that's wildly affectionate over you. Lord Jesus, increase our capacity to receive this week. In Jesus' name, amen. I would love the prayer team, the elders, if you can come up front, be ready to pray. Uh, For those of you that... This message, you know, it's your life message. It's the thing that God's doing in you right now. It's the place in your heart that you know you need. I want you to come down here and get prayer. For those of you who are not coming down here, I want you to be with each other. I want you to linger in this word a little bit. Share to those, with those who are safest with you and pray for each other. If you don't pray for anything else, just pray that whatever tries to resist this love will just be obliterated this week. And I am asking, Lord God, that every single person have a fresh demonstration of the love of God you have over them. In Jesus' name.